Welcome to the finale, day five of our five day Thrive Christmas Challenge. We are so excited that you made it here to the end and we are just so, again, just so pumped to see what God's word has to say. So what are you going through today? Yes, today we're gonna to be looking at the person of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and see how God transformed her story and her life. And I believe that God can do the same thing for you this Christmas. Amen, let's listen in. You are here for the Thrive finale. I'm so glad that you've been journeying with us these last couple of days as we've been exchanging our anxieties, our longings, our disappointments, our busyness, um, and in trading them for, for the things that God wants to do in our hearts, things that are, things that are deeper, things that are better. And, and I just I pray that God has been using um, this, this simple devotional series to be a great blessing to you and to your family. And so for uh, today, for our finale, we're going to look at Mary, the mother of Jesus. We're going to see an um, incredible transformation that God did in her life, kind of almost if, if we journey with her through the Christmas narrative. So turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter one. Now that's what we're going to start off with. We're going to look at one verse in Luke chapter one, and we're going to look at one verse in Luke chapter two, and we're going to see the transformation that God does in Mary's heart. Uh, so Luke chapter one. Verse 29 is the one verse I want to read, and, and the context for this is that um, the angel Gabriel has, has come, and he's, he's, about to, he's telling Mary and Joseph, hey, you're going to have a son. And, and even though she's a virgin, even though they are, are, are not yet married and all those things, and, uh, and so she receives that news, and here is what it says. Here's her reaction, verse 29. It says, but she was greatly troubled at the saying. And she tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And so um, naturally, like there's no, there's no shade being thrown here towards Mary. Of course she's troubled uh, because a, a, an angel representing the presence of God and bringing in the word of God um, has appeared to her. So, so naturally she's, she's troubled. And the word here um, literally means uh, to be perplexed or to be confused. I mean, so we, we see Mary, her reaction to the angel um, is, is one of being troubled, uh, one of being caught off guard. And, and this Christmas, um, that might be a way to define your story. Maybe this Christmas you find um, that you are troubled, um, perhaps in your heart. Maybe there's troubling circumstances and situations around you. Um, perhaps you have just been caught off guard and things um, haven't gone the way that you had expected them to. And so um, you find yourself um, maybe just this kind of describing this word of being troubled. I and mean, then what I love about the story of Mary is that she doesn't stay there. Um, she doesn't camp out in the trouble and in the hardship and in the, the being perplexed and, and, and confused, but instead um, she continues on the story. She ends up being an incredible model of faithfulness um, and worship um, and, and the things that she does in her heart. And I wanna look um, at one verse in Luke chapter uh, 2, verse 19, verse 19, which shows us um, this transformation that happens in her story. It says this, Luke chapter 2, verse 19. It says, but Mary treasured up these things, pondering them in her heart. Now, this is when um, the shepherds come to the manger and Jesus has been born. And it says she treasured these things in her heart. And here's what I love about that. Um, she starts in Luke chapter 1. She's troubled. And by the time we get to Luke chapter 2, by the time the Savior is born, um, she recognizes that God is doing something in her life and in her heart and in her situation. God is doing something not just in her, but for the world. I mean, instead of, allow instead of allowing trouble to just continue to characterize her story, um, she lays down I and mean, exchanges a troubled heart for um, a treasured heart. Verse 19 of chapter 2, but she treasured these things in her heart. This word literally means to store up mentally. And I know I, I said this a little bit in our, our day four when we talked about busyness, but, but how easy would it be for Mary 
to just continue to have a troubled spirit? How easy would it be for Mary to be to put on like the mom hat and have like a list of to dos like baby is born, check, on to the next activity, you know? Got to cook a meal, got to get to the next thing. Like how how easy it could have been for Mary to have gotten distracted by all those kinds of things, but it says here in Luke chapter 2 verse 19 that she treasured the things that God was doing in her heart. Listen, here's here's the challenge that I want to submit before you. And this could really be a challenge summarizing our whole series. Um, What if this Christmas we slowed down our rhythms and our pace of life so that we could treasure Christ this Christmas? What if we slowed down, pump the brakes, and, and just look at the Christmas story with fresh perspective. Allow God to produce joy and worship and hope and peace and patience in us. What if we were to slow down like Mary did to treasure the things that God is doing? I remember when my, my grandfather was in the hospital, this was several years ago, before, uh, right? Before he passed, he was in the hospital and um, he was giving kind of his last words of wisdom and advice. And I'll never forget what he told me. And he, he told me, he looked me straight in the eye and he said, you need to learn to slow down. And he was actually reflecting on his own life. And he said, I wish I had slowed down. I wish that I had slowed down to take in the memories, to to absorb the things that God was doing instead of rushing full steam ahead and speeding past everything. And those two words have been so near and dear to my heart, to slow down. And listen, for Christmas this year, friends, let's slow down. Let's slow down and let's treasure the things that God is doing in us and around us. And here's how I'm personally going to put this into practice in my life. Um, What I'm going to do to help slow down, to help treasure Christ, is I'm going to give God the first five minutes of my day. This has been a philosophy that I've kind of adopted a a couple months ago, um, where I don't remember if someone told it to me, or I just kind of created it myself, where I was like, I'm just going to give God the first five minutes of my day. Before I look to my phone, before I check my emails, before I do any of these other things, I'm going to give God the first five minutes of my attention and of my time. And this, what has happened is that um, instead of beginning my day with a bunch of stress and anxiety and troubling news and disappointment, um, I'm starting my day um, with scripture and with the word of God and with the peace of God and the hope of Christ and the things that God wants to cultivate in my life. Um, and giving God the first five minutes of my day, wow, I mean, it has been transformational for me. And it has helped me even in this Christmas season to slow down and to treasure the things that God is doing in my life. And so I want to invite you to do the same thing. Slow down. Give God the first five minutes of your day or or do, do whatever you need to do in order to slow down the rhythms of your heart in order to treasure Christ this Christmas. And when we do that, when we slow down, when we treasure Christ, and I believe kind of all the things that we've been doing here at Thrive Christmas come together, you'll be able to lay down your anxieties and and be able to exchange them for the peace of Christ. You're going to be able to surrender your longings and allow God to cultivate deep patience in you. You're going to be able to cast aside or, or even or or just exchange your disappointments for a greater hope in Jesus Christ. You're going to be able to surrender your busyness and the altar of the Lord in order to take on worship in your heart. And then finally, what I believe will happen is you'll be able to trade out uh, the troubles of our hearts and the troubles of the news and things around us. And you're going to allow um, God to give it a place to where uh, you can treasure the things that God is doing. And so I invite you this Christmas. How do you thrive in Christmas? How do you thrive in the midst of chaos? Uh, We thrive by laying all these things down at the feet of Jesus um, and taking on uh, the things that God wants for us. I want to end with one final verse. Matthew chapter 11, uh, verse 28, Jesus invites us and he says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I think this Christmas we need to hear the invitation of Jesus afresh 
and anew. Jesus wants us to come to him with our baggage, with our anxieties, with our longings and disappointments. Jesus wants us to come to him with our busyness and with our troubled hearts. And in exchange, Jesus wants to give us rest for our souls. He wants to give us a peace that surpasses all understanding. He wants to cultivate a patience that transcends time. Uh, God wants to fill us with hope in our souls that, that, like we've talked about, could be an anchor in times of disappointment. God wants to fill our hearts with worship um, so that we can truly worship Christ, our Savior and Lord, this Christmas. And God wants to give us the, the gift of rest as we treasure the things of God. So join me this Christmas. Let's put these things into practice and let's thrive in our walks with Jesus this Christmas. Day five, I'm so proud of you for completing this five day challenge. And we just wanna end this time with a moment to pray for you as you go into this Christmas season. So God, we so thank you for the opportunity to see your word and to see the way that your son Jesus, his life as a baby intersected into the lives of the people around him with Mary and, 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 and Zachariah and the shepherds and all of those who were involved in this Christmas story. And so God, I pray that we would be encouraged by the way ways that you impact our lives and allow us to exchange darkness for your light through your son's death, burial, and resurrection, starting with the birth of Jesus. And so we're so thankful and I pray for anybody who is watching this um, and that they would be able to trust you even more with this Christmas season. They would have peace, they would have joy, um, they would have patience and all the things that we talked about in this time. We love you and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, we're so glad that you're a part of Thrive Christmas. We want to encourage you to put these things into practice. Um, it's great to be able to hear the word. It's a great uh, devotional series you've gotten to be a part of, but it doesn't do anything unless you put it into your life. And so we want to encourage you to live this out, put these things into practice and let God do something great in your life and your family uh, this Christmas. So we love you guys and we wish you a very Merry Christmas.